here is here is the puzzle, right? And if you didn't already, right? Um, because I didn't print it out for you. Sorry, that was a bit rude. I would love you to write down the key parts of what you think this puzzle are, because I'm going to refer to them, and you're going to need to refer to them in the proof that you create for this, because we can prove who's a liar and who's a truth teller here. The first thing is, I want you to think back to that slide before, which I'm sorry I took down, but what is the basic building block of a proof? What are they? They are yeah. statements, right? They're statements. You've been making all kinds of statements? The, the question itself, the puzzle itself, has statements built into it. Now, some of them are really important and we need to be able to refer to them, right? And I don't want to have to keep on saying, you know, when that guy said. I want to have, you know, when we say triangle ABC, rather than, you know, that triangle that's over there in the left and it's the wider one, not the narrow one. So let's give some things some names, right? Which do you think is the most important statement to refer to? Which one? Uh, oh, yeah, that's the first one. What, what, tell, me, tell me what he says. Oh, we're all liars. Oh, we're all liars. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that, right? And I'm going to say, well, this statement is important. I'm going to have to refer to it, so I'm going to give it a name, okay? So I'm going to call this guy here, and maybe you want to follow suit. I'm going to call it statement P. Uh, it's sort of customary to go P, Q, R, S, and so on, okay? So that's good. It's got a name, right? Statement P. Tell me the next statement that matters. Just one of us is a truth. Just one of us is a truth. I've given you an easy example. There are actually only two things that are said by anybody. So uh, let's take that one. Just one of us is a truth teller. And we'll give that a name as well. As I said, not particularly original. I'm going to call this statement Q. Now, we also have this, um, the, the question, the puzzle, it has a cast, right? It has these people in it. And I don't want to have to keep on saying, First person, second person, third person, um, anybody got time for that? So therefore, I'm going to just name them, right? And I'll use some letters, um, just so I don't confuse statements and people. Um, I've got a couple of alphabets that I can access, and so do you. So I'm going to call the first person alpha, the second person beta, and I'll call the third person gamma. Okay, so this is just so I can refer to them without having to use um, long and uh, awkward writing, okay? All right, so... Uh, now, how do I use this setup to create a proof? Well, for starters, I'm going to look at that first statement and I'm going to consider or like, you know, suppose that the statement can be either true or false, right? Because that's what all statements are. It's one or the other. And there will be certain implications from each one, right? Uh, and that's actually a really important word which I'm going to introduce to you, right? We're going to consider what flows if the statement P is true. And if the statement uh, P is false, um, but that idea here, and I'm going to, um, every time I put in some new words, I'm going to put in purple just so it highlights for you. Um, that logic is called an implication. You know, if this statement is true, it implies, and we use this arrow symbol, um, it implies other things. Okay. So uh, for starters, if the statement is true, P is true, right? We know that on this island, who are the people who tell the truth? They're all truth tellers, right? So if this statement is true, the first implication I can see is that Alpha is a truth teller. Because only truth tellers uh, tell truth. So I'm actually going to write that because that is a substantiation for this statement. So I'm going to write because only truth tellers say true statements. I think I can fit it just here. Sorry, my writing's going to get a little messy. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to sort of highlight for you terminology as I introduce it. So we've got implication. You already know what statements are. This thing in the brackets, you're used to doing this from deductive geometry, right? This is our reasoning or our substantiation. Okay, fantastic. But, and I'm going to ask you guys to help me out here because I heard this argument going around, right? This is not the only implication if statement P is true. There's another implication, right? And it causes a problem. What's the other implication mm -hmm. if statement P is true? There are three liars. There are three liars, right? That all of them are liars, which includes himself. Alpha, right? Includes himself. So the other implication of this statement being true is that Alpha is a liar. Um, and my substantiation for that is the statement's content. The statement itself says something about itself. So this is my substantiation because of the statement's content. 
Now, uh, the final implication of putting these two together. Oh, sorry, yeah, did you have a question or a thought? Uh, um, would that be an implication, mm -hmm. or, or would that be an assumption by saying by, by saying p is true? Mm, that's a great question. So what I've done is I have assumed I've assumed for a moment that this is true, and then what I'm now doing is I'm exploring the implications of that statement being true. Um, and if, if this thing is not true in the first place, then all of this kind of collapses, which in fact is exactly where I'm going, right? So the implication of seeing alpha is a truth teller, alpha is a liar, we would say, and um, you guys use the word yourselves, right? Starts with a C, it's a contradiction. And this is a super important uh, piece of terminology. You have used it before, but now we're gonna formally introduce it, right? This is gonna happen a fair bit. It's one of our main ways of proving uh, what we know, because sometimes you arrive at something which can't possibly be true. Okay, so now uh, we sort of go further down and we say, well, if it can't be true, then the opposite must be true, right? So if P is false, then what can we say about alpha? Alpha is a liar. And um, not only can we say it's true because we've gotten it from up above, but it's because um, parallel to this logic over here, you know how I said before alpha is a truth teller because only truth tellers say true statements, I can say alpha is a liar down here because look, only liars say false statements. Does that make sense? So that's actually my substantiation. Only liars say false statements. Okay, so from here, I can kind of use this as my stepping stone. I can form some logical connections into the rest of like beta and gamma and try and work out what's going on with them. So again, gonna introduce some new language here, right? Instead of saying P is false, I can actually say the opposite of P is true. Can I say that again? If P is false, then the opposite of P is true. Now in the nature of proof in mathematical logic, we have a fancy name for the opposite. Uh, we call it a negation, right? Um, which we're familiar with this language of negatives from just numbers, but in logic, the negation of P is the literal opposite statement to P. Um, and as you're gonna see in a second, there's a couple of different ways to, to actually write the negation or the opposite of something. So if I say that P means that all are liars, uh, the simplest way to say the negation of P, and we've got a symbol for this, by the way, because uh, as we've already described, uh, we try and introduce symbols so that we can say stuff faster. So I'm just going to extend this down here. Uh, we have a symbol for this, and it's kind of a weird symbol. There's a couple of different ones, but the one I'm going to use today looks like this. Kind of looks like a step, like you're walking off of a step. So this I would read as the negation of P. I'll zoom in so you can see it nice and clear. The negation of P or not P, that's the way that you might read it, okay? So the easiest way to say the negation of P is to put a not in front, right? And then just say the statement. So if P is that all are liars, then the negation of P is that not all are liars, okay? Uh, now, this is, um, this is a helpful thing, but it's not super clear. So another way that we could say this is, we could say it not in terms of liars, but in terms of truth tellers. If not all of them are liars, how many truth tellers do there have to be? At least one. There could be one, or there could be two, or there could be three. So a way to capture all of those cases is to say, at least one of them is a truth teller. Is that okay? So I'm gonna write that. At least one is a truth teller. Okay, now, um, purple again because um, a bit more notation and language for you. See these two things that you can see in green here? They're both equal. So what we would say is normally we'd say, oh, these are equal expressions, but these are not like numerical or algebraic expressions, they're logical. So we would say that these are called equivalent statements because one implies the other and it goes in both directions. So these are equivalent statements. Um, now, you know how you can see above, I've got these arrows that say implies, right? Implication. So if two statements imply each other, what symbol do you think they would use to indicate that it goes in both directions? 
it's a uh, yeah, it's it's an arrow <laughs> that is two-sided, right? So equivalent statements they imply one another. So the arrow goes one way, and it also simultaneously goes the other way. Okay, now just before I jump off of here and look at the next statement, I also want to highlight these two words or, or phrases. Actually, these two here. So all, or at least one. They tell you something about how many things are true, right? So we have a name for this, a bit of a fancy word. We call these quantifiers, as in quantity, right? So these are statements of size or um, number, okay? How many things are true? All of them, some of them, at least one, at least two. Um, these are all quantifiers, okay? All right, so this is really good. We've got um, some logic that's established. Like, I know some of you were kind of stumbling over this and you didn't know how to articulate how you knew that the first person was a liar, Alpha was a liar. But this is how we construct a proof for it, okay? Let's have a look at the next statement, shall we? That statement Q, okay? So, what I'm going to do is think about, like I did for statement P, what happens if they're true, what happens if they're false, okay? Uh, I'm going to truncate some logic here because I think you're following already. If Q is true, what can we say about this second person, Beta? If their statement's true. There's a truth teller. Yeah, there's a truth teller, right? Um, and we know already the substantiation for that. It's the same as up above. So Beta would have to be a truth teller because only truth tellers tell truth. Um, but that has an implication, right? Have a think about this carefully with me. What is the content, and you've got it, um, I actually, have I got it up above? I do have it up above, right? What is the content of Beta's statement? He says, just one of us is a truth teller. So if he is or she is a truth teller, then what can we conclude in addition to the fact that they're a truth teller? The A and C are on. on yeah, very good. Right, so this second person, Beta, is the only truth teller, right? Um, or that. Uh, alpha and gamma are not. So I'm going to write it like so. Um, beta is the only truth teller. I'm just going to highlight that because that's the difference here. Uh, and where I get that from is from the content of statement Q. Okay. Now at the moment, on this logic, I've just supposed that it's true. I don't actually know it for a fact. So I'm going to have a look at this other branch and see what happens. What if statement Q is false? What can we say about beta? If their statement's false. He's a liar. Yep, they're a liar. Beta is a liar. But this implies um, some interesting things here, right? If they are a liar, now have a look at the content of their statement. The, the, the content was that there's only one truth teller, right? But we're now supposing that that's not true. So how many truth tellers could there be? We know there can't be one because we've just assumed it's false. So what are the other options? There's only three. Zero, or two, or three, right? Now I'm going to write all of those cases because each one has an implication. So if there can't be one truth teller, there's either zero truth tellers, or two truth tellers, um, or three truth tellers. Now, each of these possibilities has a problem with it. And maybe if you have a look up above at my logic here, and you think about the way you explained to the person you were sitting next to why you actually made a conclusion about this, I need to refer to some of the statements that I need to be true up above. Okay? So to do that, I need to, again, give some name to things. Okay? So uh, let's, have a look at, let's have a look at this one up here. Alpha is a liar. We know that to be true. Right, we've gone through some logic. So because I know that to be true, I'm going to give this statement another name. I've already used P and Q, so I'm going to call that one statement R. Okay. Now, why is statement R relevant? If, uh, if alpha is a liar and uh, beta is also a liar, right? Um, how many liars are there? There are two, right? So I can say, wait a second, there's a contradiction here because I can say off of this statement here, this can't possibly be true. It contradicts R, right? Um, because they said alpha is a liar um, and that means that uh, they can't possibly be two at the same time, right? Uh, what about statement uh, this statement here, statement three, this contradicts something too. 
why can't there be three truth tellers? Have a think about what we already know. Vren? Because then the, what is it, the negation of statement P is the first. Huh. Okay, so we're looking up here, right? Statement P was that all are liars, but we know that's actually not true. We know that the negation of P is true. So I'm going to highlight that in orange as well. This is true here. I don't need to give it another name because it already has a name, not P. So therefore I can say, oh, there's a contradiction here with not P. Uh, and that's actually the same for the last case, right? See this one? Do you see that's also contradicted? Think about this, right? There can't be zero truth tellers because we know there has to be at least one truth teller. Do you remember that? I wrote it up in green before. So this also contradicts not P. So you see every possible thing that flows out of Q being false, they all lead to contradictions. So what does that mean? Can Q still be false? No. Q can't be false because every single branch that comes out of it is a contradiction. So therefore I know in fact that this statement up here must be true. You following? I sort of exclude things um, that can't be the case. And I know that's a bit weird. We're used to making mathematical proofs where everything is true. But actually, we have to wrestle with the things that are false as well. Otherwise, we can't get to the bottom of things. OK, are you ready to make a conclusion, right? Who's telling the truth? Beta. Only, only beta is telling the truth. Oops. And. Uh, as we said before, I think Calvin mentioned it, right? That means alpha and gamma, they have to be liars because beta was telling the truth when he said there was only one truth teller. He's the only one. She's the only one, whoever they are. Uh, so therefore, the others are liars. So I know that was a weird and twisting way to go about it. We had to introduce a whole bunch of new language and notation to do it. But are you now convinced, right? There's no more, yeah, but... Uh, I heard some of you say, it doesn't make sense, or it has to be this, but you didn't have the logic underneath it that had been proven, okay?